What's good creative people of the internet? Welcome back to another video. My name is Lipola Perella and I am a full stack designer and front end developer who shares tutorials and ways that you can improve your website design process so that your web designing business becomes easier to manage, straightforward to do projects and most importantly help you create a profit while doing what you love. So in the last few videos I have been talking about um, building our new website and I did mention that I was going to build it using the new FinSuite client first wireframe or CSS classes system of whatever you want to name it. So in this video let's dive in and see if it is something that you should be using for your next web flow project or if it's something that maybe you should just put aside. So before we dive in on how to use it, let's talk a little bit about what it is. And I can be wrong about this and maybe if um, one of the guys from FinSuite is watching this video or looks at this video, um, you can correct me below. But from what I've been seeing of the way I've been using it, it's a wireframe that was created for designers and developers to be able to create websites with CSS classes and different combinations that will make it very easy for anyone who has not worked on this project from the start to understand what everything on the website is about. And when I've said everything on the website is about, I mean, you know, if you see a container, you know exactly what it is. If the text is large, you know exactly which one is the class for a large text. If you have an edge one, you know exactly which is the tag for that one and buttons and you name it. This way anyone that jumps into a website that you as the developer or the designer have created, they should be able to you know, follow along with what you have created and continue building on it without having to figure out what the CSS class means or why did you create this combo class that makes absolutely no sense. And now let's look back at some of the websites that we have jumped in and one of the things I always see is classes are very complicated to follow. Sometimes they don't follow a proper structure where you know you have your com your first class, let's say a container with a combo class or anything like that. Everything is just either one long class without any like um, underscore or underscore or dash dash, um, making it very difficult for us to know. And the biggest issue that comes along with this is that when we are trying to do more with Webflow with JavaScript, um, we do need to have clear classes that we are going to be using throughout this um, website design so that when we bring in some JavaScript it is really easy for us to know exactly which is the class that we're going to be using to give the website an action or you know an interaction with something that we are creating. So I think with that um, I believe that's exactly what the client first uh, Webflow wireframe is or the style system that they have designed and it's really useful for that so let's dive in and see how we can start to use it and how you can save it on your own dashboard and use it for your next project. So first of all, where you find it is if you head over to thefinsuite.com forward slash client first um, dash first, you will be able to be redirected to their website. Um, they always make amazing websites uh, with design, with interactions that are very easy to use. So if you're also looking for some design inspiration, always make sure to check them out. So once you get into their website, you are going to see um, literally what I just said. It is clearly named classes. Um, it's marketer friendly and it's perfect for beginners. If you're interested and you have no idea how to do CSS classes, then this is for you. So if you continue reading here, you're going to find everything you're going to need um, to learn about it. Testimonials from people who are already using it. And then uh, one of the most important tabs you will find is the documentation tabs. I think this is great. This is sort of like what you will find when you are creating um, or working with a JavaScript library that's new. They're gonna put all the classes you need, all the combo classes, and all the different JavaScript code that you're gonna need to use. So it is, if it is your first time working with this, I would recommend to spend some time on this, you know, just read it, um, go over everything. They are doing live videos, I believe where they do um, builds using this um, style system. So also pay attention to that, head over to their YouTube channel and you will be able to find all that. 
but do spend some time on this, read it, get familiar with it. Uh, for me, I think since I've been following FinSuite for some time, I have sort of learned a few things from them. Um, one of the things I learned was how to write classes and whatnot. And since I use a lot of like their JavaScript framework and whatnot, um, I think um, for myself to be able to adapt to this has been quite, quite easy. So it's something that I was sort of already doing and now with this I can just follow along really well. So once you have read over all your documentation, which you need to do, you can go back to the website and we're gonna click over on resources. And this is where it gets really cool. So if you head over to your resources, you're going to see some wireframes, you're going to see some templates that they have already built. And as I said before, these are the live builds that they are doing. So you can follow along here, or you can you know, clone any of these templates. But for me, because all the websites I am doing, I am also designing them on Figma or Adobe XD, I sort of want to start from scratch, but I want to have all these classes, um, just to make my life much easier and also for the client. So for me, I will choose this one, um, which is the one I like the most, um, but you have the IBM's Carbon um, Design System, which is great if you're working with startups that are already using the Carbon System, then you can sort of adapt it to their needs. Same thing with the GitHub um, Primer Design System. So you can pretty much take these design systems and I will show you how and adapt them to what you need without um, you know having classes that make absolutely too little sense. So. For me, I went here, and here you're able to see everything that you are going to find in these uh, wireframes. And then um, all you have to do is clone, or if you want to give it a try and see how everything works, um, you can go ahead and visit the website here. Components are all the things I'm going to show you just now. But uh, you clone it, and then it appears on your dashboard. So if you head over to my Webflow dashboard, I did a video on how to organize it so that it makes every, it makes life much easier to be able to find scripts that you need, to be able to know which are the projects that you're working on and whatnot. So for me, I have my client's websites. These are websites that I have already completed. Uh, maybe I just copy them and then I send them over to the client or websites that I am hosting for my clients. These are my free, free clonable websites. These are things that I'm creating for you in development. These are things that we're working on right now. We're working on our website, so that's where it is. And then I have the JavaScript library and templates, which is mainly FinSuite's um, JavaScript libraries and templates. So if we click it, um, you will see that I have a few things here. I have the cal uh, calculator I was working on. I have the client first wireframe that I already um, cloned. And then I have um, a copy of it because now I'm going to be using this for a new project. Um, I have their um, CMS library, how to do different things like filtering, which I did a video. Um, I'll put a link below. And then I also have some other JavaScript um, hacks here that works perfectly with Webflow. And the great thing about using libraries and now the first, um, the client first system is that because everything has been created by them, it's really easy for me to bring everything together into one project and not have weird, confusing classes. I have no idea what they mean. So let's get started with this. What you want to do now is just, you know, go here and duplicate your project. Once you duplicate your project, like how I did here, you are going to see this is going to be your starting screen, just like how they have it here. And there are a couple things you need to keep in mind here. You have components and you have dynamic components. So all this will be like an actual wireframe, sort of like what you might get for Figma or for Adobe XD. So one of the things you can do is you can just start and edit everything here, um, different components that you're going to be needing throughout the website that you're creating. So your navigation, your drop down tabs, everything is here. So you can go ahead and customize it. Um, here you have more components, things that you might use for blog posts, um, for your team, for testimonials, I believe, yep. And, uh, and newsletter subscribes, um, so many things, right? And then on dynamic content or components, I think this is more like your blogs related um, content, things that you are going to be pulling from the CMS. So if you're going to be doing something like that, then you can go ahead and use this. And then I think this one is the most important one, which is your style guide. 
And one of the best ways to see this is like your style guide is where you design everything before you put it into your website. So if I'm going to be creating, let's say, a custom um, HTML button on my website, I might come here and create my, um, pull a button from my element and then customize it with my CSS classes so that I can see exactly what it looks like. And then on the page that I wanted to use it, I will just go ahead and add those CSS classes. Um, so, but here you pretty much get to customize everything from your headings to your paragraphs, your buttons, your icons, your margins, um, your containers, your forms, you name it, everything is right here. And you can follow along with the different classes that you're going to be using throughout your project. So if you are going to be using a large container for your website, you can go here and you can see that you're going to um, this is a class that you're going to be using so whenever you put container large you're going to get a large one if you use medium it's going to be medium and small it's small so once you have everything ready you can start to um you know make sure that you customize it to fit your needs and then start to use it so let's jump into our website so i can show you how we have been using it and as you can see um, there are a couple things here that will be my own CSS classes. This is just because I've been doing uh, Webflow for some time, so I'm quite familiar with creating classes and you know making things that I know my clients will understand um, or make it very easy for them to understand. So a lot of the components you see on the website are from this um, wireframe um, client first, just because I wanted things to move a lot faster per se. But you can see like. For example, I have container medium, so I know it's like if you go to this website, now you know that this is a smaller container. And then I think it's this one. I might have a container large because now I want this to be a bit larger, right? But things are very easy to follow. So now once you're finished with your entire design of your website and you have made it your own and based on the designs you have created, one of the things you can do is you go ahead over to your pages what I will recommend is to um, get rid of you can get rid of like component, component 2 and dynamic content um, if you do want to keep it just make sure that you do some SEO um, so that you tell Google to not index those pages because you don't want people to see them per se but for me I just deleted everything and I kept my style guide on the style guide page is going to be set to non-index so that Google doesn't pick up that page and I think if I'm not wrong, if I go here, um, I can be wrong about this. Let's just give it a try. I don't know why I thought they already did it. Right. So as you can see here, they already did it. So you don't have to worry about that, I guess. Um, pretty much. This is just saying, you know, Google, when you come to my website, do not index this page. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So as you can see here, my um, style guys set up for what we needed. We have all our colors here. Our buttons are already built here with the interactions, um, hover animations and whatnot. And then the entire website was pretty much built on it. Um, it was a lot faster to build the website because we had everything already created per se, like the things that we needed the most. Um, so for that reason, it was great. And I think if you want to create a website that when you hand over to your client, it's gonna be much easier for them to understand and be able to edit without having to call you to understand what, what a class is or what this means or whatnot. I think you should be using it as much as you can. I do think you need to learn the language of the um, style guide first so that you can get familiar or familiarize yourself with it. So if you do also want to speed up your web development process and not have to worry too much about how something might look mobile versus desktop or you know um, I think you should also be using it the only thing I would recommend to do is that you start your projects with it from scratch and not build a new project where you start with your CMS classes and then bring in um, this design system into it because you might get frustrated a little bit you know Webflow tends to add numbers to your classes so the classes will no longer look the same and then the whole point of having a clear class system on your website will pretty much not be there. Let me know what you guys think about it. If you have used it, um, let me know what your experience was. I think for me it's a yes. And if you tell me, if you ask me if I should be using it, it's a yes. And one more thing guys, I'm going to be doing a live video or set of videos. Um, I'm trying to figure out the day right now. 
um, but it will be designing some new websites that we have um, projects that we got that I am actually allowed to show you. So I thought about taking you behind the entire design process from the start uh, with Figma all the way till we get with Webflow. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell button so whenever I go live, you get a notification and I will see you again in the next video.